Dream Life, an Experimental Memoir by J. Allen Hobson. I first found out about Dr. Hobson's new memoir while I was working on Dream Parley. That's an app I created for the iPad based on my reading of the Swiss psychiatrist C.G. Young. I snapped the book right up. If you want to get to the nuts and bolts of modern dream research, Dr. Hobson is the man you want to go to. His AIM model will probably be very important in future investigation of human consciousness, not just dreaming. AIM stands for three things. Activation, how active is your brain right now? Input-output gating, are you out oriented out towards the world right now or towards your dreams? You go back and forth between the two throughout your day and your night. M stands for modulation, that is memory making. Modulation tends to be very low when you're dreaming. That's why you have trouble remembering dreams. That's why a lot of people can't remember their dreams at all. Dr. Hobson pulls his AIM model together on a 3D graph on page 248. I've animated the graph here. If you're a trained Jungian analyst or a devotee of C.G. Young like I am, try not to break your arm patting yourself on the back when you see this. They're proving on the level of the neurons and neuron transmitters in our brains that that old man really knew what he was talking about. The graph shows Carl Jung's idea of circumambulation, movement about a center, and anansiodromia, a rocking back and forth, really circumambulation seen from the side. These are movements that he commonly referred to within patients and within his own psyche. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? You want to just keep looking at it. The ancient Greeks called this movement nous, which we translate as mind. There's a striking dynamic in the dream research community today. On the one hand, nobody seems to know anything about Carl Jung. On the other hand, they're always confirming something that he said, down to strange details like the circumambulation that I just talked about. Dr. Hobson suspects that the space in our brain strangely mimics the outer space that surrounds our planet. He talks about it in the part of the book where he presents the 3D graph that I just animated. This segues very nicely with an old idea, stretches back thousands of years, that the human is a microcosm, every one of us, a walking universe. Young was really big into that idea. Hobson and his colleagues, colleagues would disagree with my assessment of Carl Young, and that's okay. Jung looked down on consciousness from above while it was working for decades. He gave an honest assessment of what he saw. Dr. Hobson and his colleagues are coming up to consciousness from below, from the cells, from the chemicals, from the molecules. They just haven't met Jung in the middle yet. I believe that day will come soon enough. This book is a great autobiography of Dr. Hobson. It's a good foundation to build on if you want to understand his scientific research. But the book is also an important sociological witness to the damage cults can do to society and civilization. In this case, the cult would be Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. Dr. Hobson shows that Freud's disguised censorship theory of dreaming actively sabotaged good dream research for years. Hobson had a secret underground resistance to Freudians going back to his early days as a researcher and student. This is the back end of the 1950s. Hobson had to keep his intellectual head down every time they made their presence felt. I can say with unfailing authority that if Jungians had dominated the American psychological intelligentsia at the time, Hobson's life would have been a lot better and the science would probably be a lot further along. Our so-called elites are always falling into cults like this. There's a death cult strangling the life out of our economy right this very second. Its Davidian compound is the University of Chicago. Its scripture revolves around Atlas Shrugged and the road to serfdom, and it owns the hell out of Wall Street and the White House and the European Central Bank. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that if you're going to be psychologically robust and spiritually advanced, you cannot be lazy and you cannot be a coward. Unfortunately, there's a critical mass of people too lazy and are scared to do this work for themselves who are willing to turn to some nobody to do this work for them. And if that nobody can speak with great gravity and authority, well, that's just better. Think Alan Greenspan talking down to little Congress people for decades before everyone finally figured out he was a crackpot for Ayn Rand. Unfortunately, economists have a shoe that fits the moral universe just as well as the economic one. Bad money chases out good. There is a downside to Dr. Hobson's ideas about himself and the whole cosmos that lives in his unconscious. 
dream symbols. Freud's dominant dream theory was that dreams were strange because the ego was disguising dream content as it came marching out of the more primitive id, because this content was running roughshod over a civilized conscious orientation. So you need symbol work to get past the disguises. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Mm -hmm. Not always. Freud is right about the source of dreaming. Dreams come from the older brain stem. But this fear of psychic dissolution is more of a projection of Freud's lack of authenticity than a general usable observation. You must have death before resurrection, brethren. And that is only for the brave. Hobson got rid of any idea that dreams, images, or symbols at all. They are what they are. I think Freud had one up on both men. Dream images are symbols, but not because they're disguising anything. They're symbols because they're compressing information. A very different animal. And from reading what Dr. Hobson has to say about dreams, I think he'd agree. Actually, I think he'd be liberated by this minor reorientation. He says a lot in this book that indicates he has a few knots to untie in his personal unconscious. So, when you circumambulate, okay, around a dream image, you decompress it. Even itty bitty images can pack a wallop. You'd be surprised. And if these images are disguised to you, to us, it's because they're telling us things about ourselves we don't know yet. A rating for dream life? 10 out of 5 stars. Watching a great mind at work is a beautiful thing. Thank you, Dr. Hobson, for your decades of service. I hope we learned the right lessons.